I am disappointed and I'm frustrated by today's decision of the United States Department of Education. Oklahoma has made great strides for forward strengthening its schools largely because of the flexibility of the waiver that has freed the state, school districts, and schools from 13 federal regulations. The reg regulations of No Child Left Behind, I believe, are counterproductive and overly rigid, and they will pose a number of serious challenges for all of our schools. The U.S. Department of Education's decision, unfortunately, is not terribly surprising. And the loss of the waiver became all but inevitable with the pa passage of House Bill 3399, which mandated that Oklahoma schools would return to the priority academic student standards for two years. That became more of a certainty when higher education did not meet its August 12th deadline in making a determination on the pa past standards as to their ability to be college and career ready. Finally, the State Board of Education delayed starting the process towards building those new standards. Here is the reality of where we are today. Today, Oklahoma has roughly 400 and 60 schools that are in need of improvement. Meeting, they're not meeting benchmarks set by the federal government and our state. These schools, as of yesterday, there were 460 of them under the flexibility waiver. They're receiving intensive service, services from the State Department of Education, some of who you see before you. Now, as a result of losing the waiver from No Child Left Behind, the number swells now to more than 1,600 schools. And that will have a significant consequence for school districts and schools across the state. But Oklahomans are resilient people and they're resolute. And our education community what will do what needs to be done to meet the requirements of no child left behind. Today, I have directed my staff to begin the process of transitioning to the requirements of no child left behind. I am confident that they will continue to work with the dedication and with the perseverance and with their eyes focused on the welfare of the children of the state. With that, we will take some questions. Understand, please, that we received this letter this morning, and we've had just a matter of hours to study the letter and to begin to understand it. We'll take your questions. Superintendent, what's the dollar amount of federal funds Oklahoma will lose as a result of this? Now, let me be clear. There is not a loss of federal dollars, all right? This is how simply we are spending those federal dollars. The total amount of funds that come to Oklahoma from the U.S. Department of Education, it's up here on your screen, is over $372 million. Now, of that, Title I funds this year for this current fiscal year, 1415, equal $155 million. The total amount of Title I funds, if Oklahoma was required to do their 20% set aside this year, is $145 million. So the set aside this year would have been about 39% of those available Title I funds. And um, I'm sure you'll be supplied with a copy of the U.S. Department of Education if you have not yet, because they have relieved Oklahoma from the requirement of that 20% set aside. Now let me explain that 20% set aside. That means that school districts 
that are found to be in need of improvement that receive those federal Title I dollars, that their district must put aside 20% of those dollars to provide for what's called supplemental educational services that occur outside the school day, such as tutoring for children. And that money also must be applied for the transportation costs for parents that want to exercise their option for school choice then the individual sites that fall under these requirements must put aside an additional 10 percent for the purposes of professional development. The state has been relieved from that requirement until the 2015-2016 year. However, school districts will see that they must comply with some differences in the way they are able to spend other dollars and other funds. I want to be specific for you, with for you, but right now we are going to need to evaluate each individual school and each individual district and where they are in meeting these requirements and what that means for that individual school. This will take time. This will take a great deal of effort. We have sent out this communication to superintendents right before this press conference and we'll be making every effort to continue to communicate with them through this process. This is extremely complicated and it will take some time for us to determine that. Well, certainly there's going to be a financial impact. Remember, we're not losing money. It's how you spend the money. And so I can't give you a blanket statement about the whole entire state. Again, we're going to have to be going back in and making calculations about adequate yearly progress. And the state hasn't done that since 2011. And so we're going to have to go back and make those determinations and find out where schools land in that um, along that uh, continuum. And then we'll know how that's going to impact those districts. And so I want to give you a specific answer, but yes, some districts will have um, a very unfortunate fiscal impact. Um, and, uh, but I can't tell you how many. I can't give you percentages. We're just going to continue to work. We just know that we had a manageable m number of sites yesterday and that's where this doesn't make any sense. Under flexibility, we were working hard and making great improvement in these 461 sites. And we're doing it effectively. But all of a sudden today, it is now at least 1,600 sites. Out of the what, 1,700 total sites in the state, almost 90% of our sites will be in need of improvement because we're taken back to this arbitrary sign doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Any odds on the past standards meeting requirements here? Excuse me? Is there any odds on the past standards that we're going to go to actually meeting career and college ready standards? Well, as you know, um, the state regions for higher education are charged by the U.S. Department of Education with taking a look at the priority academic student standards as to their applicability to um, very narrow definition of what college and career ready is. And that definition includes the need of a student to take remedial courses when they enter college. That's a pretty high bar. It's a very narrow definition. And I know the Regions for Higher Education um, went into this and, 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 and worked at it diligently and informed us. Um, I believe it was August 8th, that they were not going to be able to make that August 12th deadline. And so we went forward with our waiver application, knowing that. And we made the argument to the U.S. Department of Education that while we don't have this determination, we are in the process of transitioning to new and very rigorous and very, very usable standards that will get us will help our students to be college and career ready. 
we believe when I came into office, Oklahoma had rejected the past standards and said they weren't adequate to prepare our kids for the demands of what they needed to do to be college and career ready. But yet now the regents are being asked to look at those and suddenly declare them as college and career ready. I think this state needs to step away from those standards that were clearly not productive and not giving us the results we needed. I think we need to write new standards. I think we need to look at states that have the best results across this country and use those as a template, but then also use the expertise of Oklahoma teachers and write our own standards for our own children. I believe from that we can write the best standards in this country. And I'm devoted to doing what I can the remainder of my time in office towards that. USDE indicated that Indiana, the same thing we did, said no to Common Core, that their waiver was sustained because they took certain steps to make sure they could get the link. Did we just not take those steps? Or? Well, I don't know a great deal about what Indi I don't know the particulars about what Indiana did. But I do know that uh, they had adopted the Common Core and their legislator, legislature acted on that. And I believe they completed the rewrite process in five months. I was surprised at that. And I just know that there are critics of that saying that it was pretty much a cut and paste of the Common Core and that their higher ed acted and said that they were college and career ready. And for that now, Indiana has had their waiver renewed begs the question, is this about chasing money or is this about excellence for children? Well, you originally supported Common Core. Would this have happened if people had listened to you? You're right. I did because when I came into office, it was the law of the state of Oklahoma. And I knew how undesirable the past standards were. And I was a part of a group that wanted a great deal of reform for this state. And I looked at the standards and they looked very, very good. But I've had an opportunity over the last several months to engage with Oklahomans and hear how concerned they were about those standards. A lot of Oklahomans were upset about that. A lot of Oklahomans were concerned for their children and they heard all the controversy. And so I went to the governor, it was in April, and I said, you know what? I said, Oklahomans aren't happy with this. It's time we rewrite our standards for our Oklahoma kids using Oklahomans. Let's give Oklahomans what they're really asking for, because I was absolutely confident that our educators could give it to us, absolutely confident. And she agreed, that's indeed what we needed to do. And so I've been very excited working with people like Sandra Stotsky from Massachusetts, who was a big part in 1993. Do you know Massachusetts is the best performing state in this country? Do you know in 1993, Massachusetts was not doing very well. And they did a very large education reform bill. And it was more than standards. It was how they certify their teachers, how they train their teachers, how they fund schools. It was a soup to nuts bill. And out of that, though, came the Massachusetts standards. That was over 20 years ago, and they've been working steadfastly on that. But look at the results they've got. But they first went out to folks in Massachusetts, and they said, what do you want for your children educationally? And they had comments from people in higher education and in common education and parents and grandparents and business individuals and all of, a lot of people. Dr. Stotsky told me it was over 50,000 people in Massachusetts over about a five-month period. And they came up with a set of guiding principles, and out of that came the Massachusetts standards. And Massachusetts has continued forward. Now, granted, they adopted the Common Core. But a great deal of what was in those standards is in the Common Core. I think it's time we now go back to those Massachusetts standards. Because Dr. Skotsky has, um, she's an academician. And she was able to show me the technical aspects of the Common Core that are a problem. And uh, I was inspired by her and grateful 
for her input. And I'm hopeful that Oklahoma will take a strong look at her recommendations. Well, so if I'm understanding correctly, the, uh, the, the failure to declare the standards of college and career ready guidelines is the reason. That's, that's why. This we were not able to demonstrate to the U.S. Department of Education that we had academic standards for our children that were determined by the regions for higher education to be college and career ready. That was that final piece of the waiver. We had met all the other requirements of the waiver, but that was that final piece that caused them to decline this. Now I might add that the U.S. Department of Education put out a statement a couple of weeks ago providing more flexibility in the implementation of the teacher and leader effectiveness component, which is another major component of the waiver. They went outside those boundaries that they had established before. And we made the argument, if you're establishing new flexibility around teacher and leader effectiveness in that portion of the waiver application, then let's go ahead and apply it to the work we're doing and understand that we're bridging ourselves to a new set of rigorous standards. Give us a year to go about that work. And they said no. Is there an appeal process? No. No. As soon as we are able to uh, develop our new standards, and it's going to take a while. If you want to do it right, if you want to, if you want to do it fast and do it bad, It'll get done quickly. If you want to do it right, quite frankly, it's going to take well over a year. If you want to be able to have the full participation of educators, if you want a full review of the process, if you want a chance for Oklahomans to speak about what they want and give their opinion, it's going to take a while. And then it goes through review of those that are deemed to, by state law, to certify this and goes through approval by the State Board of Education. The State Board of Education is charged with producing the new standards. And then it goes to the legislature. It's going to take a while. We had set out a timeline where those would have been submitted to the legislature uh, with the beginning of the 2016 legislative session. So is it fair to say that things are going to get worse before they get better? I certainly can tell you they're going to be more challenging. What should schools do next? Excuse me? What should schools do next? We've begun the work of communicating with superintendents. But right now, teachers are hard at work in their classrooms starting off the year, and they're full of hope for the year. And they're focusing on their students in critical instruction. We know that work won't stop. We know that they will continue to be, to be focused on their students and delivering their best every single day. We will work very, very hard and as quickly as we can to communicate with districts so they will have a better understanding how this will impact them. Because it will have an impact this year. We need to get that information out as quickly as possible. And I'm not dodging your question, I'm just telling you, we need a lot of detailed information for each district so we can be effective in our communicating with them. But if higher ed did come out and say the past standards are good for college and career ready, they're going to go away, right? I don't know. Well, that's what they said. I think that USDE would be. Well, I don't know if USDE said that today. Yeah, I don't know if they said that today. Um, uh, perhaps you know something more than I did. Um, I'm reading their letter uh, and. Um, um, Is this worth chasing money? Is that worth, is that what this is about, chasing money? Or is this about what's right for our children? <laughs>